we're back on a frigid January day. Um, but we're nice and warm with a toasty fire going on in the basement. And we're back working on the Mountain Park model again. This time I decided I'm going to focus on Kitty Land because it has enough rides that are simple in structure that I can make them with very little trouble. Uh, so I thought. So, so far, I've been sort of drifting around a bit. I haven't done all of the kitty rides. For instance, um, I did do the cutie caddy. And the cutie caddy cars are this big. They're incredibly tiny. Uh, the detail on the actual model that I developed was really nice, but the cars themselves are going to be so small in scale that you're never going to see all the detail anyway. But these are all done. I also went ahead and built the elephant that was right next to the Dodgem car. It was a big fiberglass elephant, uh, and it was just a decoration, and it stood between the Skyride and the Dodgem car building, so I have that. Um, I also built... the little booth, the ticket booth for the golf course. And the golf ball, it was about eight feet high. It was a giant golf ball on a stand that advertised the miniature golf course. So that, along with the new roofs for the bathrooms, will finish off the north end. So I took care of those because I figured I didn't want to leave those hanging. And then I started focusing on rides. So I'm still working on the boats, the kitty boats that were in kitty land. And it took me a few tries to get this right. The first time I had the boats going in the wrong direction, so I had to flip those around. And then I had the a pool that the boat sat in too thick in scale, so I fixed that. So this is the right scale, now I just have to paint it. While I was doing that, I also decided to work on two of the game booths. Uh, one was a glass game, the other was the birthday game. The glass game was right in front of the Dodgem Car building. That's it right there. Uh, no, sorry, this is the birthday game, which was down by the arcade. This is the birthday game, and I haven't finished painting it yet, and I wanted to show you what I have to do to paint these things, because as you can see, the scale on these is so tiny that a normal paintbrush isn't going to do it. So what I do is I use a toothpick, and it's pretty ridiculously complicated and detailed. Uh, basically, I just have to dip the toothpick in the paint, and then very gently sort of paint on the areas and hope the paint goes where it needs to go. One thing that I did find, because you notice over here I have my testers model paint, which is fairly expensive. Uh, I taught the animation class last semester, and they built 3D models and printed them out and animated them. And one of the students suggested using nail polish as paint. And I thought, what a brilliant idea. It holds very well. So I got myself a whole collection of different colors of nail polish, and they had a lot of the colors that were used at Mountain Park, the sort of baby colors, the light blue, light green, orange, um, pink. And so those worked out really well for the cutie caddy. And so the uh, surface here of the glass game had the same type of colors. So I'm just going to use these and I'm going to have to use the toothpick to just gradually put those on there. These do come with their own brushes, which is nice, but for much of the work I'm doing, it doesn't make any difference because the, the objects are so tiny that the brushes are too big. I also built these little things. These are what we used to call the gypsy booths. One was uh, basically a little shack that was for fortune telling and there was an identical one next to it that was a guess your weight game for a while and it also then later on had a whack-a-mole game in it. So I made those two little 
objects. Maybe I'll make a little whack-a-mole game and stick it in there, but probably not because I'm trying to keep the park to around 1980. And in 1980, they didn't have the whack-a-mole. It was weight, guess your weight. So I'll probably just keep them the way they are. So let's get to the actual act of painting so you can see what it takes to do that. The colors on the actual building were orange, green, yellow, blue, and pink all the way around. I only have, whoops, 16 sides on this, or 16 panels, I should say. And so that doesn't really divide up well for five colors. It would divide up better for four colors. So I have orange, I have green, I have a yellow over here, uh, and I have a blue, and I have a pink. So all I do need to do is just eliminate one of the colors. Since this is pretty close to a bright yellow color, um, I'm going to eliminate the yellow, and I'm just going to go orange, green, blue and pink and do that all around. Or maybe orange, green, pink and blue. So I'm gonna start off with the orange. And all I'm gonna do is open this up. And take this off. And set this aside. And instead I'm gonna use my toothpick and then just go one every four, just dab that on there, and then I'll go four over, and dab that on there, you see that okay? <laughs> I'm watching what I'm doing, I'm not watching what you're doing, let's see. And right there, and one right there, and that should do it. So there's the orange. Now I'll just wipe this off, put this back together. Next will be the green. Shake that up. This is a bit more lime green than I normally would want, but it'll work out okay. One thing that's nice about the uh, nail polish is it dries really fast. The enamel paint takes a, a day or two to dry. Green. And got to make sure I'm showing you rather than showing me. Green. And. Also, another thing I had to do, you notice there are only four supports on this. And that's because when I printed out the building with the regular number of supports it has, the supports were so thin that they would not print at that scale. They just fell apart. So I redid the building and made these much beefier. In Blender, they actually look absurd. They are so thick. But when they print, they actually print out nice and sturdy, which allows me to then glue the, the roof on like that, and it holds up really well. And blue. It was a little blobby, but that'll work. And there we have it. Now I'll just let that dry for a couple minutes, and then all I gotta do is super glue the top on, and then the two game booths are done. And then I'll move on to painting the boats. The boats had a fairly similar color to everything else in the park. It had the sort of baby colors with uh, blue, orange, yellow, 
and the bottom of the boats was blue and the inside of the boats was blue. Of course, the water was blue and this was blue. This right here in the middle was the commutator. That's what got the electricity out to one boat. There was just one boat that had a propeller in it. So the electricity was routed up through the base underneath the concrete and then went up into the pole and then it came out. This top part here was basically just a cone of metal that hid the commutator and the wire was attached in there and came out on a wire on a, you know, a metal pole and attached to the side of that boat. And they went around, they were all chained together. Very simple mechanism, but made the kids happy. And a few minutes later, there it is. The other game booth done. So, now we'll move on to the boats. As you can see, I've got my boats painted, and now I'm going to do the blue and the blue. Now the blue in the middle is going to be a darker blue. I'm going to do the lighter blue first. I've taken my testers white, and I've added some of that. I'm just going to put a dash of blue in there. I really don't need much. So that'll be good for the inside. So I'll begin with that. All right, and now I have all the water in there and now I want to paint the edge and I don't need to be as gentle with this so I'm going to do that with a q-tip and I'm going to need a little more white in here so let me close up the blue get the white That's the light baby blue I'm looking for. That's good. So I'll just take this and go ahead and roll this on there. And I'll go along the rim. There we go. And then the only thing left is the post in the middle. And let me just hold this in place with some tweezers. And there we go. The boats are all painted. The next thing I attempted was the whip. Sort of veered in a different direction, but I figured it's part of Kitty Land because it's basically in Kitty Land and 
The whip also had a companion right next to it, the kitty whip. And that's part of Kitty Land. And I figured this would be a great killing two birds with one stone because if I did the big whip, all I gotta do is miniaturize it and I have the little whip with a few variations. The kitty whip that they had uh, was a round one. There are some kitty whips that were just uh, like the original oval, just smaller. Uh, the one at Mountain Park was actually a circular one. But I'd have the cars made and that was the most difficult part. The whip, if you don't know, was a really popular amusement ride in the 30s through the 70s at amusement parks all over the country. And the one at Mountain Park ran really fast. And that's a nice thing to finish off because the building is not built for that yet. It's right next to the merry-go-round. And if you remember in a previous video, I had put aluminum tape on top of the floor of the whip. Uh, and it'd be nice to finish that off and get that out of the way. So that's what I figured I'd work on next. So there's the machinery for the whip, and I got to paint it. I did paint the arms that come out from the center. The arms were attached to a cable, and they had a spring-loaded uh, hinged set of steel beams, and then it was hooked to a pivot directly underneath the car. And these used to rotate around like this. And as the ride spun out, the cars would rotate like this, and the spring would then pull it back as it got around to this section. It was a really enjoyable ride. So these are two geared wheels at each end that would pull the cable around. This was the motor house, and the motor had a gear, a cog really, that was down below here that would turn on this wheel. So this is all set to go. Now all I need are the cars. And I started making the cars, and I first started with this one. And the car came out pretty nice, except there are no sides on it. Even though the sides were created in Blender, they were so thin that when it printed at this scale, uh, the printer just said, ah, the heck with it, I'm not printing them. So I had to beef up the sides, just like when I made the game boots, I had to beef up the supports. So I redid it with very thick supports and ended up with this. And that's a pretty close approximation of what the whip cars were like. They were pretty intricately painted. They had a lot of stripes and um, arcs on them and different colors. So I'm gonna to try to replicate a bit of that. But and this will go right over here. and be glued down there. And I'll have one car on each arm. All eight cars are done. So what I gotta do now is paint them. And that should be that. Then I'm gonna go and print out the kitty version of it and put that together. And the kitty version, actually, I should be able to do the entire platform uh, and arms and everything on one circular print and then just add the cars afterwards. Or I could try adding the cars on it as it is, I might be able to print the whole thing as one like I did with the boat. So I'll have to play around with that and see what I get. Well, it's been a while since I've uh, gotten a chance to work more on the model. And now I'm working on the turtle ride. And I thought I'd show you some of the work that I do in designing it. This is the turtle car that I've been working on in Blender. And I've got to add the head and the little feet. But basically the car is almost done. And I'm doing this in pieces so I can put it together. If I... Uh... Show you this. This is the actual track. Which took me a while to figure out how to do that. But there's the track for the turtle ride. And I also made the ramp that goes in front of it. And this will butt right up against that section there. And I made the truck separately. The truck is what carries the cars. 
and then that there is the truck with the wheels on it and the turtle car itself will mount one on each of these and then that goes into the center post of the track. So I'm almost done with that and then I've just got to print it out and paint it. I'm not sure how it's going to come out because it's going to be again at a really tiny scale but at least uh, that'll be one more ride I can add before I bring what I've got up to the mountain park model at Heritage Park. So, back to the cars. I'll keep working on that. Well, we're now into May, and I'm still cranking away at this. This is the painted whip bottom there. And I've got all the little whip cars painted. And something that you remember from the last bit there, there's the little tiny turtle ride. That's all set to go. And one other thing I did that was just sort of spontaneous was the Sky Fighter, which was the little kitty jets. Um, I managed to do that very quickly, and I'm happy with the way that came out. I actually did a much larger version for a friend of mine. It's not done yet. i still got to trim it up and then paint it, but it actually flies, and people throw up all over the place. And this is also right here, the Kitty Turtle Ride. Uh, Kitty Turtle. That's the Kitty Turtle. This is the Kitty Whip Ride, and that's almost done. I just got to put some red in the middle there, which is how it was. And over here, there's the Dolly Pitch. That's all ready to go. So I'm planning tomorrow to go to Heritage Park and install what I got. I wanted to do the roof of the Dodgems too, but I haven't had time to do that but I'll at least get a lot of the stuff that I've had lying around for the past few months, um, be able to get that in, and then continue working over the summer. All right, we're back, and I've got the pieces. So let's start to put them in place. I'm gonna have to use a lot of different types of glue on this for all the different surfaces. So I got the hot glue gun, I've got all the different other types of glue, so. So there we have it, the beginnings of Kitty Land. As you can see, there's still quite a bit more to do. Besides the ticket booths, which are over here, there's still the carousel, the swing ride, and over here, the pony carts and the little auto cars, and the souvenir booth over here. Back here is the um, dart game and the grocery game. So that will finish off Kittyland Land when that's done. Also, notice the boats are quite a bit different. It turned out that uh, I looked at a picture that I had taken from the Ferris wheel and there were only five boats. I had six in my original model. So I modified it, and the nice thing is the boats are a little bit bigger now, so they're easier to see, they were easier to paint. I also noticed they were all yellow with blue interior, so I changed that as well. I also, of course, still need over here the Kitty Roller Coaster, and over here the Puffing Billy uh, to round out those I'm still working on. I did a test of the roller coaster car. I can make that, but then figuring out how to do the track. Now that I've done the track of the turtle ride, I might be able to apply some of that knowledge and do the roller coaster and the Puffing Billy train ride. Of course, there's the whip. And then there are the two gypsy boots over here. And then there's the glass game over here. Or sorry, yeah, the glass game. And then over here 
is the birthday game. And then way over here in the corner, there's the little golf ball. And there's the uh, ticket booth for the golf game. And right over here in the corner, there's the elephant right next to the Dodgem car. So, so far, all that's installed. Now, on to the next piece, and I'm not sure what that is yet.